In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to do an initial setup process for Tuition Express within your ProCare software. Now, before you get started with this step, you will actually be needing your Tuition Express account number or Tuition Express ID number, as it's sometimes referred to. That is actually available through a couple different resources that we've sent out to you. It's either going to be in a welcome email that you've received from ProCare software and Tuition Express or it will be as part of a letter that was received in a package of information that you received in the mail. So once you have that number handy, then uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is from your ProCare homepage, you'll want to go to the Utilities tab, and under Utilities, click on Download ProCare Support File. Now when you click on that, it's going to give you a screen that you'll click Yes to in order to continue. And then it's going to come to this page and it's going to ask you for a password. This is just a generic password. It's actually TE01, and that's for Tuition Express 01. So once you type in TE01, just click the download button. And that's going to open up what's called a Tuition Express Configuration Assistant. Now I'm going to cover a few things on this page. We'll just go from the top on down to the bottom. At the top, you're actually going to see your school's name, or you actually should see your school's name. Now, if you have multiple schools that you have purchased Tuition Express accounts for, then you may need to do this setup for each separate school within your program. Once you're on this screen and you have your school selected, then you'll just begin by typing in your Tuition Express account number. Now, once you have your Tuition Express account number typed in at the box on the top of the page, then you can just proceed down to the next section. There's five boxes here, and it's best to just put a check mark in all five boxes. Now, over here on the far right side of the page, you'll find these two amount fields. These are actually here in order for you to build in a fee in the event that a transaction fails to go through when you're trying to process something from a customer's bank account or a credit card that you're storing for them. And we'll go into batch payments in another video, uh, but this does pertain to batch payments specifically. Now, the idea here is that you can put in a fee. This may be a fee that you already have at your center, or this may be a fee that's going to be unique to this program. Uh, it's typical for centers to put in uh, an NSF fee that they have at the center currently, but it's ultimately your choice on what you want this fee to be. So in the event that a parent has a bank account or credit card account on file with you, you go to attempt a payment from that account and it fails to go through, this fee would automatically post to their ledger card at that point in time. Okay. Now, as we go down to the bottom of the screen, there's going to be an empty box down here. What that box is for is to choose what's called a batch bank account for deposit reports. Now, this is really nothing other than a title that's going to apply on a section of a deposit report within your ProCare software for payments that have gone through Tuition Express. It's not actually indicating where money is going to go to in reality. It's just, again, just a title that we're putting onto the report for where the money is going to. Now, the very bottom box is what's called a minimum transaction amount. This always defaults to $10, but you can actually go as low as one penny. And this is actually determining how low of a payment can be made through your Tuition Express uh, account or your uh, program by a customer. So once you have all these sections filled out, it could look very much like this or slightly different, then just click the Update button, and that will save the settings for you. Okay, so now I'm going to click the exit button to exit out of this page altogether. Now, the next little setup piece I'm going to do is actually configuring a receipt option. And this receipt option is going to apply to what we refer to as a POS or a ledger point of sale transaction that you can do with a parent or customer uh, at your center. So I'm going to go in to the configuration tab up here at the top. I'm going to go under system. And then from here, I'm going to go under Accounting Management, down here to Family Accounting. And then within the Family Accounting section, I'm going to go to the very bottom to where it says Receipt Options. 
I'm gonna double click on that. Now the first thing I'll do on this page is click the box in the upper left corner to turn receipt printing on. Now if we go three boxes down here on the left, we'll come to this one that says store receipt history two weeks. Okay, uh, we recommend that you change this from the default of auto print and store to confirm print and store. That way the system's actually going to pop up a box that actually asks you if you would like to print a receipt and you can click yes or no, rather than auto print, which would automatically send a receipt to the printer, which the customer may or may not want, okay? Now, once you have that uh, selected, then we give you these four additional boxes here on the left. And this is just simply additional information that you can have added to each receipt that's printed out for the customer. Now you can choose all of these if you'd like all this different information to print on the receipt or you can do a selection of them or none at all. It's totally up to you. Now over here on the right-hand side of the screen, it's gonna give you all the different options that you can apply this receipt printing option to. Now for the purposes of Tuition Express, I'm just simply going to check the box down here towards the bottom for Tuition Express CCPOS, which stands for point of sale. And then I'm also going to select the option for credit card refund, which basically is gonna give me the option to print a receipt for either a payment or a card refund that I might do with a customer. Now, once I have those selected, now I'm gonna go down to the very bottom of this screen and click save to save these selections and then exit. And now I can ultimately exit out of all these screens. And that concludes this video.